Hey guys, my name is Taylor, and recently in my video that I did on installing Homebrew, some of you asked about my terminal that I had and how I got it customized in that way. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. Here is a image of what the final version is going to look like. And the reason I use this is because one, it just looks really cool. And two, it gives me a certain level of organization so that I can see my file path. And then there's plugins you can use for Git, which show you exactly which branch you're on. So I find it a really nice productivity add-on for my workflow. All right, guys, well, let's check out how to get it configured. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to iTerm. So right now you're probably using your standard terminal here. So if I go to um, echo shell like this, you can see that we are running the Z shell and we just have our basic terminal here. Okay, so we're gonna see how to in install iTerm, which is just a better terminal that I like to use and you should use too. So we'll go ahead and we'll quit out of this and we're just gonna download this stable release. At the time of this recording, it's 3.4.3. And it's gonna download a zip. We're just going to, um, if it doesn't auto extract like it did here, just double click it and then it will extract. So I'm gonna go ahead and now we have our app. So what I like to do is I like to just take it down here to my username. And there's a file that I have in here called applications. Open that up and then I just put it right in here. This will install it at the user level. Instead of the system level, it's a little bit more secure and, and I think it just keeps things a little bit more organized. So I'm gonna double click on my term, get this warning, and now we have iTerm up and running. And again, if we do the echo commands, you can see that we're running the Z shell. Now, if you're on an older version of Mac OS, the newer versions have Z shell out of the box. Um, you might have bash. If you have bash, then you're just gonna go over to um, install, install Z shell. And here, here is the link to install um, Z shell. Just follow these directions and you'll be able to do it. But since we have Z shell, the next thing that we're gonna do after we have iTerm installed here is we're gonna go over to uh, GitHub, oh my zish, oh my zish, and we're going to install this, which is just like a add-on on top of Z shell. It allows for a lot of customizability and it will also allow us to install our custom themes. So to get started, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna install it via curl. So we're gonna copy this command. We're gonna go over to iTerm, paste that in, and it's going to do its thing, install, and now you're going to see that our cursor has changed here to a little squiggly. See that? Here. So we have a squiggly. That means we're good. All right. So then the next thing that we're going to do is now go over to github.com and then romcat power level 10k. All right. And that's going to take us here. Power level 10k is how we're going to get our um, terminal looking like this with the file structure, manual routes. Okay, so now we're at the manual version. So we're gonna copy this and we're gonna go here. We'll clear all this out and then we'll paste this. Okay, let's open up our uh, RC file. Let's see what we get. So, Okay, so we have this source user to local Parallelton's ish theme. Alright, so I'm gonna copy this here and I'm just going to paste that in here and I'm gonna hit save. Okay, so once that's loaded, then I'm gonna do source this zish rc, hit enter, 
And now we are in our configuration wizard here, which is exactly where we want to be. So um, it's going to ask us if we want to install this uh, Meslo nerd font, which they recommend all over the place. So we're just going to go ahead and, whoops, we're going to go ahead and say yes to that. So why? It's going to go and fetch that font and install it. All right. Please restart iTerm2. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and hit Command Q. And I'm going to say OK. And now we will open iTerm back up. Um, sure, we'll check automatically. And because you haven't defined any. OK, so now we're in the actual configuration file here. So does this look like a diamond? <laughs> Yes. Okay. And does this look like a lock? Yes. A Debian logo? Yes. Fit between the crosses? They do. Alright, so now we can choose what style of prompt we want. And let's just go with kind of similar to what we had before. Um, let's do classic. Okay. Uh, Unicode ASCII 2, I'm not really sure what, the, uh, I kind of like Unicode, we'll, we'll do Unicode, and then I guess we can choose our different version here, we'll go with dark, okay, show current time, um, yeah, sure, we'll do the 12 hour format, um, if you're in like a, like a non-US country or, um, you're in the military, you might want to do military time, but we're just going to do the 12 hour. Uh, separator slanted vertical s rounded. I like the slanted, so we're going to go. Ooh, there is angled. Now I'll, I'll just do slanted. I kind of like slanted. Um, sharp, blurred, slanted, or round. Oh, I like slanted. That looks cool. Um, oh, wow. This is, there is so much configuration here. This is awesome. Uh, prompt tails. I guess we'll go. We'll go slanted. We'll you know keep it similar. Uh, one line, two line. You know, I don't really see a point to two lines, so we're just gonna do one line. I think that looks cleaner. Uh, compact, sparse. Compact or sparse? I kind of like it sparse. Let's space it out. Give it plenty of room. Few icons, many icons. Ooh, I love icons. So we're gonna do a lot of icons. Uh, concise or fluent. On, that took five seconds. We'll do, we'll do fluent. Information is power, right? Um, okay, so enable transient prompts. No, yes, what? On master, I have no idea what this is. I guess it's just more compact. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll do, yeah, we'll do transient prompt, whatever. Um, instant prompt mode. Quiet chooses to be renamed instant prompt recommendation. I guess we'll just go with whatever's recommended. Verbose, apply changes to just RC. Yes, yes, I would. Okay, so yes. And now it's gonna save all that to our Zish RC file, which um, if, we, if we go back, let me see if I can just go up. Yeah, let's see what we got in here now. Oh, that's cool. So after the last command, it puts it in a minified kind of command form so that you're not actually seeing all the prompts. I like that. I like the minified form. So now let's see what we, what this did. Um, okay, so I added some stuff there. We're good there. That's what we did here. So this was pretty critical to getting it to work. Um, and yeah. Okay, well, that that looks like it. So we'll just exit out of that. And now we have our prompts. So yeah, after every command, it kind of kind of reduces it. Um, clear, we can go to, we can go to code. Um, we'll look in, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. What are you doing? Get out of here. Um, we will look in here. Uh, whoa, what happened? 
code. Oh, you know what? It's because I don't have my alias. So the first thing that we're gonna do is, well, no, we're not gonna do that. I'll just manually go there. So I have a file called code here. We'll look at this. Um, we'll just go into our, uh, our JavaScript file parser. All right, and as you can see, it shows us what branch we're on. And this is kind of compact, so if you wanna make it bigger, maybe put it over here, so you have all this room. You know, we'll get rid of this, close all of this. And yeah, now we have a complete thing here, and you can read that prompt up there, all right? Cool, so now what else can we do with this? Um, we don't really have a lot of, let's see, we'll go to profiles, colors. We don't really have a lot of colors here in our presets. We just have these, and we'll just kind of change it. But if we want to get really into our color themes, we're gonna go back to our browser here. And let's see, we got that. So here is a bunch of color themes for iTerm that we can use. And how we do this is we go into our downloads here. So I'll download the zip. And it'll just take a few seconds. I'll show it in Finder. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I think I can just indirectly import it. Actually, no, let's, Let's unzip it. So I'll double click it. It's gonna unzip. Now it's just kind of sitting here. Um, and I'm gonna put it in a safer location. I'll just put it, well actually no, I'll, I'll just leave it there. Then we'll go to iTerm. And then for color presets, I'm gonna import. And I'm gonna go to my downloads here. And I'm gonna say open. So we're gonna go to schemes and then we're just going to open schemes and then we're just gonna select all these and hit open. And then that is gonna import them. It might take a while because it's a lot of themes. So just be patient with it. And then when it imports here, now we have all these. And you can see as we go over them, it changes the theme. So. I like to use, what is it, um, what is it called, liquid carbon transparent here, and as you can see, that gives us a new theme there. And then what I like to do is I like to go to my window, um, add some transparency here, and I like to blur it, make it look like, uh, kind of like Mac OS a little bit, blur it a little there. And then let's just change, let's just do like a different one. Like we got, um, there's like some crazy ones. Like, let's see. Um, yeah, so this one is like completely brown. So yeah, you can just do like some fun stuff with that. And that's really how you can get your terminal to be uh, pretty customized here. And there's lots of things you can do with it, like add plugins. Um, add more fonts, whatever you want to do. So uh, that's a look into how to customize your terminal. So if you like the video, please leave a like and thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.